Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com. Tonight I'll be testing out the new William Optics Red Cat 91 on the stunning Pleiades Star Cluster. It's going down to minus 18 degrees Celsius tonight, but I've been clouded out all month and I've been dying to collect some new images. It's a busy time of year with the holidays and Ashley and I have to head out for a bit and I'm gonna leave the scope running in the backyard while we're not here. I have a few strategies for making sure this goes smoothly, so buckle up and please join me for a night of photographing the Seven Sisters with my first light in the Red Cat 91. It's the same thing every year, maybe one or two clear nights in December total and bitterly cold. And the most painful thing is there are so many great targets to go after right now. The Orion Nebula, the Horse Head, the Rosette, the list goes on. Oh, and it being clear, the only night this week we have plans, that's just a given. Taurus rises ahead of Orion and it's just a better fit in terms of timing for me tonight. It's also a pretty unforgiving target in terms of an optical test. Broadband, no filter targets from the city in general are tough, but this one can also cause some serious reflections as well. I rigged up the Red Cat 91 here in the garage a few weeks ago. There aren't many of these in the wild yet, but from what I have seen, the results have been pretty good. This is the fourth Red Cat I've used, or five if you count the two versions of the 51. I seem to have skipped over the 81 millimeter category. 51, 61, 71, 91. There's two color combinations for this scope. The red one that matches all of the other cats and this black one. William sent this without much of an explanation other than saying it's one of the best telescopes he's ever produced. I do like finally having a red cat that has surpassed the 400 millimeter mark in terms of focal length to get more of those mid-range targets. The AM5 has no problem handling the Red Cat 91 and I've mounted it to Steve's Starfield Tri-Pier for a better height and clearance. Just real quick before I go any further, the Cat 91 is the second biggest cat right now. There's a 108 out there. This one has a focal length of 448 millimeters at f4.9. 55 millimeter image circle on there, which is medium format compatible, which is just crazy. So full frame is totally covered. It has the WIFID focuser, which you can add an EAF to if you wanted to. It has the Batnoff mask built into the lens cap. Really nice dovetail, great tube rings, and the cat saddle. This configuration passes the unattended meridian flip test, although my cable management could use a little work. I find that most of these get really stiff in the cold, which worries me because it's easier to catch when it's just this solid mass of cable rather than you know, a flexible cord. I don't have an autofocuser on here, which I could really use tonight. I think I'll finally commit to installing an EAF on the Red Cat 91. The last piece of the puzzle is installing a rotator on here. The CAA comes to mind. And if I do that, I will be able to fully control every aspect of this rig from inside the house. I'm finally starting to use this ASI Air in station mode so I can control it from anywhere in the house without worrying about dropping that Wi-Fi connection. It's a no-brainer for anyone shooting with an ASI Air from their backyard. The regular Wi-Fi wasn't bad, but it wasn't good enough to connect to my phone when I'm in the basement. Now I can play ultra-modded Skyrim on my Xbox with a pint and my tablet sitting next to me monitoring the subs as they come through. Does it get any better than that? I've also been experimenting with an all sky camera system to monitor cloud conditions so I can check on that as well. I'm just using an ASI planetary camera with a fisheye lens and just doing a live loop and keeping that running. And I connect to that using any desk on my tablet, but it's not a perfect system. It times out after a certain amount of time. So if you have any suggestions there, I'd love to hear them. It's bitterly cold out here. So dew heaters are a must. The AM5 has been through conditions like this before, so I'm not worried about that. I'm using the ASI 2600MM, so LRGB imaging is the name of the game tonight. I think I'll go with 120 second exposures through each LRGB filter. Because I won't be here to refocus, I'll have to just cross my fingers and hope that that final focus holds throughout the night. If my final image looks a little blurry, you'll know why. 
Because we have to leave for a bit, I'm gonna have to make sure that everything is running smoothly for the long haul. The Meridian flip should happen around 10 p.m. and I'll be watching my surveillance camera closely. It's not like I can do anything if it goes haywire, but at least I'll see it going down. <laughs> when we get home, I can check everything and refocus, but the forecast calls for clouds overnight, so that might be it. Wish me luck. Good boy. Well, in true winter astrophotography fashion, the skies clouded over shortly after we left. So it performed a flawless meridian flip and resumed shooting the clouds, which is great. Here's a blink session of all of the subs I took using the Cat 91 on Pleiades. Look at those clouds just take over. So I think I got about 12 subs, uh, two minute subs, on the Pleiades through each filter before it just turned to pure whiteness. Um, so I did get a little glimpse of what this telescope can do. I'll just stop that for now. Here is a single sub using the luminance filter. Yeah, this is the luminance filter. So I don't see uh, anything, no surprises in terms of star quality. Everything looks great to me. Uh, through the loom filter this is a single sub it was a very cold night it was it was minus 20 degrees i think so um exceptionally cold so i wouldn't be surprised if i saw some weird star things going on because of the cold uh, i don't think there's any pinched optics or anything strange like that thank god so that's the loom sub a single sub there and then here's a stack of about 12 two minute subs through the red filter. Again, things look really good and it's really sharp. It's unfortunate that I used uh, a crop sensor camera um, because really one of the, the big selling features of this one is uh, the full frame compatibility and even medium format, which I don't have a medium format camera to test, but um, everything looks good in terms of optical quality on this really demanding target with these super bright stars in the Pleiades. So just wanted to show you that before I get into the final image.